And if you go back to the older banners, which sometimes were much larger than the ones that we're used to today, the, the, again, the whole business of, of ordinary people painting these banners or inscribing them demonstrated that, that, that they came up from within the people themselves. It's an expression of folk culture. And therefore, it reflects the people. So some banners reflect the trades where, where people came together and worked in the shipyard or in the aircraft factory or something like that. Some of them are, have an industrial resonance or, or the Great Northern Railways where people, orange men, w first combined in, in a kind of factory situation. Some banners reflect the fact that people came together in a church situation. So quite a number of the banners have a church on them because that's where the orange men first met. So some of them have those kind of, of connotations. Other um, banners look, f look back to organizations that are no longer here, like there'd be an Ulster Defence Regiment banner or a, a B Specials banner. Um, and then there are other banners which simply reflect something of the history, as I say, of uh, the British people in this island. They refer to the Siege of Derry or the crossing of the Boyne itself or the Battle of Antrim or uh, in this, in the last century, the, the, the highly emotive Battle of the Somme. Well, certainly the early accounts of, of the first um, Orange Parade talk about uh, banners of sorts. From that, the more colourful banners then developed. And today's banners are probably smaller than the, the banners of the 19th century, early 20th century were. They are obviously very colourful elements of the parade. They're very um, artistic elements of the parade and, and quite unique um, and very expensive as well to produce. Um, banners nowadays, I imagine, are somewhere probably in the region of between 1,500 and 2,500, depending on the, on the banner uh, to produce. Um, that banner, whenever the lodges are on parade, is a, is a focal point for that lodge, and um, it immediately identifies those people as belonging to that banner. So it does engender a great deal of community pride in the sense that, well, that belongs to us, and that says something about where we're from. And in that, in that sense, um, I think that individual members of the lodges take a great pride in their banners. Well, the, the banner carries a message. Uh, that is always uh, important. Mm -hmm. These are the things it says to me, it's part of my culture and heritage and identity. Uh, and therefore, you walk proudly behind the banner. My father worked probably 15 years um, with a man who had worked on banners about 40 years before him. And then I worked with my father for 30 years. And it's all that knowledge, it's passed on. So it, it's, it's nice to have all that um, experience behind you so as to, to whenever you have to call on it. Although they're different shapes and sizes, every banner will have the same design. Its name will be at the top, whatever name, and then because of that you can have two designs. It can be a single ribbon which will be short or you can have a long ribbon if it's a larger name and pictures are just could range from anything. Then at the bottom it would be the district or the name the in glorious memory, if it was King William, something like that. On the picture scene of it, you would see nowadays that it's, um, years ago you would have um, Britannia, uh, the secret of England's greatness, the Bible and the crown and things like that there. A lot of it has died, but they um, they have it nowadays, they just put their, they wouldn't have alliance, they maybe put on their own orange hall or something like that there. That's, that's come under a lot more, so it has. So that's really when you can break the orange, the orange would stick to more orange, traditional Battle of the Somme, things like that, and then the, or the black would be predominantly all Bible pictures. So if you get an orange banner, if you get an orange banner and somebody comes in and you're maybe showing them pictures and they like it, but it's maybe too much, they would, the lodge would say it's too much of a black. So they, they keep their own separate identities as they go along. And again, the apprentice boys, it is mostly um, the Mount Joy break in the boom, the siege of Derry, Walker's Monument, um, different things done, the coat of arms and things like that, that's, they have their own identity as well.